Um, just a quick introduction. So my name is Ben Loomer and I work at Learn, which is a nonprofit that works with all the English school boards around the province. I do lots of things. One of them is I'm the English language arts consultant. And the other is I do, uh, I work with teachers around community service learning. So a sense of how um, students can be engaged in addressing authentic needs in the community. And I met Jesse at a Learn conference called Remix Ed. And we started talking and I became really um, interested in the work she's doing. And then uh, I saw some of the, the uh, videos that she helped teachers and students create, and uh, especially in the Northwest Territories. And I was very inspired to uh, kind of bring her work to, uh, the, the, uh, to teachers in Quebec, because she lives in Montreal. So um, that's how this whole thing kind of got started. We, uh, she wrote a blog, and, uh, and that's probably why, how you got here. So um, I guess that's all I want to say. Uh, just a few housekeeping issues. In general, uh, I encourage you to keep your microphone off so that uh, you don't make kind of background noise. But on the other hand, I encourage you to ask questions. You can do that by turning on your mic or using the group chat. Uh, or also raising your hand, which is a little feature on Zoom. And, um, and uh, our contact information will be at the end, and I really encourage us to, uh, to stay in touch if this is something many teachers want to network around and share their work. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass the, uh, the microphone over to Jessie and let her, uh, let her present. Great, thank you so much, Ben. And hello, everyone. I'm really excited about uh, this webinar because I am really passionate about digital storytelling. And I'm really excited to see that the Ministry of Education in Quebec also really strongly believes in digital competencies for both students and teachers in the 21st century. It's very exciting. Um, I am, I'll just, uh, get a little bit into what I do. So I am a media educator um, and I have been for 15 years. And what is a media educator? I design and deliver digital and media literacy experiences and resources, mostly through hands-on workshops that involve creation. So most of the workshops, the students that I do, the students will never hear me say the words media and digital literacy, but there's a lot of that enmeshed into the content. And we create because I know that it's really fun, it's really engaging, and there's no better way to learn how media is made than to make it yourself. So I specialize in digital storytelling and also in stop motion animation. Um, with iPads and also with other technology that the students and teachers have access to. So I do work, I'm based in Montreal, I'm based in Quebec, but I also do travel extensively right across Canada and internationally, um, more and more. Uh, and I also deliver webinars and online workshops, especially for youth and teachers that are in northern Canada, really far north, where it's too expensive for me to go or them to come to me. So um, it's been a really successful uh, digital storytelling experience actually, teaching them uh, the creation process uh, virtually. So it's really, it's, it's, I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is that we will have a chance at the end of this workshop for a question and answer period. For we, we've scheduled about 15 minutes. So it'll be more, and, and I hope you can turn your mic on for that because there's a lot to discuss. This is a short webinar for a lot of content. So um, even if we don't have time in this, work, in this webinar, we can continue the conversation um, either over coffee or on the phone. I'd be happy to. Um, so the pillars of the workshops um, with hands-on media and, and the work that I do is, is media literacy and digital literacy. So media literacy being uh, really at the core critical thinking. And this is a real true passion of mine. My master's thesis was on media literacy and hands-on workshops. Um, we really need to be teaching our students this, this very crucial and critical skill, um, if nothing else, critical thinking, because students, youth these days know how to navigate digital tools pretty much effortlessly, but critical thinking is not natural. It really is not natural. It, they really have to be taught that. And I strongly believe that that's something that we as educators can be sharing with our students. So Media Smarts is an organization I work with a lot out of Ottawa. If you don't know about them, definitely check them out. They have resources in both English and French. All their resources are free. And I, I can't say enough about them. Um, and then digital literacy and digital citizenship 
are, are really important skills that we need to be sharing. Um, there, this is also at the core of the Quebec Digital Competency Framework. Um, and, and this workshop does address many of them that I will talk about um, in a bit. Here are a few of the partnerships and clients that we work with. Um, Media Smarts, the EMSB, the Canadian uh, Museum of Nature. Uh, we, are, we are very busy, but uh, <laughs> it's really exciting work and it's a really exciting time to be in media education. Um, call me a nerd, but this is my jam. Uh, okay, so this is what the webinar is going to look like. We're going to briefly cover the learning objectives, what we're going to learn uh, today. Okay, that's cool. Um, I'm going to go over what is digital storytelling, the equipment that you'll need. I'm going to show you three short examples of digital stories done by students that were that gave me permission to show them. And then I'm going to get into the nitty gritty. How do you actually teach it? Of course, there are different ways to teach it. This is my approach. This is what's worked for me. Uh, but what's really great about teaching teachers digital storytelling is that I'm hoping that you can adapt this curriculum to your own local needs, right? You have the students for a much longer time than I would if I just came in and did a few day workshop. So um, yeah, I'll show you how I teach it. Um, why does digital storytelling work so well? And I'm going to talk about a few of the curriculum links that this hits. I'm going to send you with some additional resources and some other websites that I have found helpful. Um, that I hope you do as well, and then get into the question and answer period. If we have time, I am going to also do a demonstration of iMovie, and I'm also going to show you two great websites for copyright free images and copyright free music that students can use. Okay, so the four learning objectives of this webinar form an understanding of key concepts within media and digital literacy. Form an understanding of digital storytelling and how it is connected to a few key Quebec digital competency objectives. I want you really to feel inspired to be able to teach students how to create videos for self-expression. And I want you to understand how this activity can be integrated into coursework. Okay. So what is digital storytelling? I am using the Center for Digital Storytelling's framework. And they're based out of Berkeley, California. They have since changed their name to Story Center. And I have listed their website as one of the resources. They're amazing. And essentially, the combination is this. Still images, voice, music, and text. It's not very complicated. And that is part of the beauty of this activity. You are not going in teaching in you know industry level professional filmmaking this is really where the story can really shine we don't want first-time filmmakers to feel intimidated or overwhelmed by the technology and the beautiful thing about this is that we're using still images um, instagram is the most popular app that secondary students are using in canada they're already inundated with the visual and with images and they're creating content with, vis with the visual image. So why not actually form an activity to weave images together? Um, voice is their own voice, right? This is a personal narrative. I want to hear what is important to them. This is not a fictitious story of two kids walking to the Depeneur and buying chips and then coming home. This is, I want to hear what's actually going on for them. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how you can adapt the storyboard to, to your own needs. Music, right? This is music gives emotion. It gives the mood to any movie, any film. Most films do use music extensively and it's often not even noticed. You just have feelings come over you and you don't really know why, but it is totally intentional. And when you teach students this, you ask them to choose appropriate music for the mood that they're trying to set. If, they're, if, they're, if their message and their, and their story is really an upbeat, fun project, why would you have a sad music track, right? It's confusing. We want, we want things to gel together and we really want um, that to, to, it to fit, be complementary. Uh, and then the text. So this is also a traditional literacy activity where they have to come up with a title. 
They have to have credits at the end. This is where they're giving credit to if they didn't take the photos, who did? If they didn't make the music, who did? Um, and also if they want to thank anyone, if they want to have a date. And for your school's purposes, this could also be where your logo goes, right? It shows that your school is digital, li digitally literate, you're doing really great activities, and it's, it's just an opportunity for you um, to kind of promote some cool programming that you're doing. Okay, so let's get into the equipment that you'll need. Uh, again, like I say, this is really designed to be a, kind of a low barrier activity where this is not really fancy equipment. iPads are really handy. I don't work for Apple. No matter how hard I try, they won't give me anything really. I, I, but I have to say that iPads are really handy for this kind of thing because you can do everything in-house. Um, if you don't have iPads, not to worry. There are other options. Um, if you have iPads, the software you can download is iMovie. It's free. If you have a PC, desktop, Chromebooks, or laptops, you can use this brand, this, this new software to me called OpenShot. This is a free open source program that does very simple video editing, and the user interface is actually really nice compared to a lot of other open source softwares out there. Program, sorry, but no offense, but open source um, sometimes doesn't quite work with teenagers or other, other young folks because it doesn't look good. Uh, OpenShot actually does kind of look good. WeVideo is um, a cloud-based video editing software and it's been used a lot. Like the Story Center in California, they use WeVideo almost exclusively. Um, there is a membership fee. And if you don't want to pay that, there is a watermark on your videos. I'm, I don't use it, but I just want to let you know these are a few options out there for you. Um, for Mac desktop uh, or laptops, iMovie again, or OpenShot. And you can also do this as a BYOD, a bring your own device activity where students, if they have iPhones, they can, they can download iMovie. There you go for free. Uh, this is something that they that, that could also really work really well. You could also pair up students if, if some students don't have phones, right? They could do a project together. That's totally fine. Um, just so you know, I will be providing this uh, presentation for you. You don't have to take notes. Okay, so how do I teach digital storytelling? Okay, so it's really awesome to break it into three main steps. Pre-production, production, and post-production. Okay, uh, it's really straightforward that way. And it this, this is, it's, it's critical that we are teaching students to create responsibly and, and go through the proper steps that filmmakers go through. I used to work with the National Film Board, so I've got that kind of, that leaning where we want, we don't want students to just be creating kind of garbage video content. We want them to be proud of it. We want the quality to be high. I don't want them to be using images that are out of focus, that are low quality. I don't want the audio recording of their voice to have you know, street traffic, you know, clouding their voice, unless that's what they want. So it's the same thing with, with, with this kind of thing, with pre-production, we really want to be planning their project out. They're not getting, they're not taking photos quite yet. They really have to plan it out. And I'm gonna show you, and, and after these examples, I'm gonna show you the storyboard. So let's see a few examples. And, and as a media literacy activity, I want you all to be thinking about what images are they using? What sound is present? Do I like what I'm seeing? Do I like what I'm hearing? Is the message coming through to me? Would I do something differently if I had the opportunity? Okay, so these are only a few minutes each. And uh, this one is done by a woman named Emmeline Shushomakalowit. I do work with a lot of indigenous communities in Canada. Um, and this is on climate change. My name is Emeline Ipoli. I'm from Echelina. I'm only going to be home. I'm from the Arctic and I have lived on the land. Just because uh, there has been a hunter and provided for my family. I know that sometimes you can really come anyway, right? My father knows the land. Of all the members of the community, the hunters okay, are the so, first yeah, I just to wanted to let you know. And they are also most affected by this change. Okay, babe, so I'll see you they soon. have a relationship with the land and the knowledge that comes Where with it, like animal behavior, weather patterns, and how and when the ice forms. 
Oh, oh sorry. Okay, you want to let me go? Sorry, babe. Oh, tell her I say hi. Oh, she's so cute. Polar bears are hungry and coming into town. There are less seals than there used to be. I a know, and men can't multitask. The tides in the current. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. You could do it, but you can do anything. The river has changed, and the list goes on. The land is everything to us. As my father's daughter, I would like to do my part in raising this concern to all Canadians. I'm concerned about this, the climate change because our land and culture are being impacted in huge ways. If my father and other hunters cannot provide for their community, we have a major problem. I would like to raise this concern in hopes of inspiring us all to work together. Perhaps this awareness could help us save our animals and culture. I'm seeing there's chats here. That, yes, that was iMovie. We taught, um, all of those were made in iMovie, yeah. Uh, but really, like, it's, it, we're doing very simple video editing, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be iMovie. Um, okay, so I'm, I wish I could be like, so what did you think of them? Like, and, I, and maybe we can talk about that in the question and answer period. I, do, I know I do have to keep on rolling, though. Uh, but I, I just, yeah, I, I hope that you enjoyed those and I hope you got a sense of what they were able to create. That last one with Danielle, though the audio recording wasn't great um, because there were kids in the other room making quite a bit of noise. That workshop was done in four hours. So it's, it was, it's pretty remarkable what you can do in a short amount of time. Uh, I would have preferred to have done it over several days, maybe even a week. And with teachers, you can build on it. It doesn't have to be a one or two day activity. Okay, so um, the pre-production, so they need to be brainstorming ideas, right? And maybe you can brainstorm together. Maybe you can talk amongst each other as a group to talk about what you could talk about. Uh, and I want them to be doing some on and offline research, right? This is, I don't know if you can see my little yellow thing here, but a digital competency number three, Right, we have that as harnessing the potential of digital resources for learning. So I really hope that they are doing some online learning. If they wanna do a project, for example, about their own community, well, they could be looking online to see what the population is, for example, um, the history of it. Um, these are just some basic examples. Um, and then the storyboarding or beginning to write out their narration. This is the real kind of the, the backbone of the whole project. You can also do a photography composition practice. This is what I do if you have some time. And just to kind of get them familiar with telling a story visually. So here is an example of the storyboard. This is a, a double printed one sheet that I give out to my students. And the, it, the, the, first, the first on the left you'll see, this is a visual storyboard. This is what filmmakers do before they make a film. They kind of want to sketch it out visually, what is their project going to look like? And they'll make some notes in the bottom, uh, the bottom lines there for the text. And I also want them to be thinking about the music, right? This is a draft, but it's just getting them to think, okay, so how would this actually play out? That is one option for starting. The other is actually writing out a script. And the script is ideally broken into three parts. Uh, I usually start it by who am I? I always want to know how the student identifies, what their age is, what community that they live in. Do they have anything that they want to talk about as how, who they are? Is family important to them? What do they like doing after school? What do they want to do when they grow up kind of thing? Those are some really nice kind of introductory statements that they can talk about at the beginning. Uh, the second one I have is where have I been? And the third is where am I going? This is completely flexible. You can do whatever you want. The students could make the one, two, three up. I would stick with the one, who am I? I feel like that's a really important part of the digital stories, but that definitely is flexible as well. Um, I've also done ones on who am I, 
what is an issue in my community that affects me? And the third is, what am I going to do to try to improve the situation? So trying to kind of teach like civic engagement and responsibility and leadership in their own community. And it's really powerful when you put it into a video, right? It's a contract with yourself. You're, you're, you're telling the world, you're telling at least your class that you're going to do this. Um, so these are just some examples. Uh, this is the pre-production phase. Uh, the second is production. So finalizing the narration script, collecting images that you'd like to use, right? Once you have your story and your, and your whole message written out, then you can figure out which photos that you'll need to complement that, those words, right? It really, you have to think of it like that. Um, and then thinking about the music. The, this production, uh, these, this hits the number six and number seven digital competencies. So communicating via digital technology with their message and producing content via digital technology with video production, right? You are teaching them real digital literacy skills. So I want to quickly go over to Chrome and show you how to look for copyright free images on Google. Um, so if I wanted to search for cat, if I, if I wanted to include a photo of a cat, but I didn't have any myself, I could search in Google and under tools, you can choose labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification. So this is a copyright free, you're allowed to use these images. And this is healthy, this is, this is, this is great safe digital creation practices that we need to be teaching our students. We can't just take any image we find on the internet and use it. These photos we've been allowed to use. So here we go. Click on them. These ones I'm allowed to use. So I click on it. I right click. I save it on my desktop somewhere. Okay, so now, okay, that's fine. Save. Move on to the next one. Okay, so this is, your, it's, it's really important to be teaching them this. And then when they come to the credit section of their iMovie project or video project, they will put photos by maybe themselves and Google images, right? This is all just like safe digital citizenship practices. Um, so that's one thing. And then also I wanted to show you bensound.com. So this is a really great website for royalty free music. You can download these tracks for free. Most of them are for free. And you just need to put at the end music by www.bensound.com. Okay. That is totally fine. That's totally fine. Um, I do encourage students if they'd like to create their own music, if they can, um, in with Mac, again, there is GarageBand and I do encourage students to make their own music and then it just imports directly into iMovie. It's so seamless. Um, but if they can't, maybe they can play the guitar. Maybe they can find a, a friend or a dad or a sister or someone that would like to sing, whatever. I like to think about students transforming from passive consumers of media into active creators in as many levels as they possibly can. So uh, it's, if the internet doesn't work in your school, awesome. This, this, it forces them to really have to get creative. <laughs> Okay, this project I've done many times offline and it's it's actually really cool what comes up. So, uh, but you can use Ben Sound. Okay, back to this. Okay. So now um, we're going to go to, I've done that. Okay, now post-production. So this is starting a new iMovie project, recording the voice, importing your images, arranging them into the correct order, adding the music, title credits, adjusting volume and exporting. Okay. Maybe sounds like a lot. It's really not that hard. And you can, there's so many people out there that have uploaded iMovie um, tutorials if you need. Um, I've done some myself. And I'm going to just do a quick, this is like super quick. So this is iMovie. I'm importing media. I've been super organized and I've kept all of my images 
<clears throat> all of my images are in one folder and they are, where are they? Pics for DS demo. Okay, so these are all my pictures that I'd like to use. It's actually everything I want to use. And my <laughs> Zoom. Okay, import selected. So I've imported the assets. You're, you've 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 written your narration. You've chosen your photos. You've maybe even chosen your music track that you want. And now you're going to import them into iMovie, and you're going to bring them all in to your project. So here are some photos of my project, and it's really straightforward. I can just move them around. I can change the order. Um, this is about my trip to the bush camp. OK. And so if I've got my photos in the order I want, then I can go to the microphone here. I press record. And three, two, one. Hello, my name is Jesse Carell. I am 39 years old, and I had the incredible opportunity to be invited to a bush camp in the Northwest Territories two years ago, and it changed my life. OK, for example. Um, and I, I, I could keep on going if I wanted. And now I listen to it. Hello, my name is Jesse Corral. OK, you get the idea. Um, I've also got a music track. I know I do somewhere. Is this it? Yeah, so this is the music track I want. I add it. OK. Hello, my name is Jesse Corral. I am. OK, you get the idea. I'm not going to spend too much more time on that. Uh, it's just that easy. I add my title, I add my credits, and it's basically done. OK, I'm going to quit out of that. OK, now another really important thing that I must encourage you to do as a teacher is to have a group and and or community screening. So this is an opportunity for the students to not only share their project with their peers and the teacher, but also to have accountability. So when you tell your students at the beginning of this activity, we are going to have this screening in one week. You do not want to look like the student that couldn't do it. And so it really gives them the fire under their butts to finish it. And it also shows them that you care you are going to act as a kind of producer. You're the director, you're the producer, and you're just giving them a kind of a reminder of the time. Okay, so you've only got a few more hours to finish that. Maybe it's not perfect, but it's still gonna be great. Don't worry about it. Let's keep on going. How can I help you? Um, you kind of have to, you have to be encouraging. And, and some students definitely work at different paces than others. Some of them are just right out of the gate. They know what they wanna say and off they go. Um, and others need a little bit more encouragement. Um, and that's your job. So um, a group screening. This is something like you just do in your class, right? That's one option. I always give the students the opportunity to not show it. If this gets into private stuff that they don't want to share pu publicly, that is totally fine. I never want to put a student in a position where they have to share their projects. Um, if they feel comfortable sharing it with you, great. Um, but if not, I always want to just give them that opportunity. I want them to feel comfortable making something that it is important to them. Um, and uh, then also, if, if you want to take it to the next level, have a school screening, right? Invite the school and, and learn about these amazing students and their work. You could do that. Uh, you could also invite other people, family politicians. If you're doing it, for example, on an issue in your community that affects them, why not make it kind of a political issue and bring like decision makers and leaders of the community into the class and, and hear from the students in their own voice why it affects them. This can be extremely powerful. The youth don't often realize how powerful their voice is. Um, and I really do encourage you to, to, to do that. 
I'm looking at the chat. Um, okay, so there's that. Oh, and I wanted to also go back to this. So the these, this also hits the post-production and the group screening uh, also hits number six and number seven digital competencies and number eight, the group and community screening using digital tools to foster inclusion. I love it. I'm just going to leave that there. Okay, why does digital storytelling work so well? It is easily adaptable to any age eight and up. I, I wouldn't try it with any younger than eight. Even 10 and, under, uh, 10 and under is a bit of a stretch, but I've done it uh, and it's definitely possible. Um, you just might wanna narrow down the scope of what their project is about, not have kind of, you can do it on anything. I would definitely have the guiding questions uh, pretty straightforward for them. I've also done it with younger students where it's kind of like a fill in the blanks of their, you know, like Je m'appelle, right? <laughs> like my name is, I live here. So it's not, you know, it's a bit more straightforward and that's, that's totally doable. Um, the curriculum links that this hits at least is English, French, ESL, language arts. So this is a great literacy activity for learning a new language and they have to practice writing and speaking it. Citizenship and community life, media studies, media literacy, and computer studies. You, you, I know that with this digital competency framework, you are expected to be helping your students in these different specific 12 areas of digital competencies. You are expected to do that. And often they're not, there aren't a lot of resources to help you do that. And so I'm hoping that this activity actually helps you achieve some of these goals. Um, this project is a really powerful opportunity for self-expression, identity, and storytelling using a really engaging media creation activity. Students are consuming so much video, not just students, we all are, let's be honest, right? I actually have an idea to canvas Netflix to get a student tab up there and we could actually be encouraging students to create their own projects and put them on Netflix. But anyways, that's another webinar, that's another story. Um, yeah, yeah, right? Like, wouldn't it be amazing? I think they'd be into it. And students would be like, because I've had students ask me, really young ones, is this going to be on Netflix? Is my movie going to be on Netflix? And I'm like, you know what? It should be. Like, why not? Um, and they really get into it. They really get into video creation. You can also adapt this project to a traditional research project, right? In the one, two, three, beginning, middle, end kind of guiding questions of your storyboard, you could also be asking them to design a thesis around a particular subject and have an argument for it and tell that, share that research through a project like this. Um, and you're also telling your students, honestly, that you're a cool teacher. And we all wanna be the cool teachers. You know, you are saying, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. I hear that you are really into video. And you know what, I'm going to, I'm gonna meet you. This might be out of my comfort zone, but I'm gonna push myself out of it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn with you. You know, they can, they can definitely teach you about video creation. <laughs> you can teach them the critical thinking. They can teach you about the actual video editing. Um, they're wizards on this stuff. Um, and this is a really cool chance. The fourth point I have here is a chance for you to learn about your students. And I can't say this enough. This is a really great thing about this project. Students open up about things that are on their mind that they've never really told maybe another student in their class and certainly not their teacher. Um, like for example, Vim Bainashe, who I worked with in Peterborough last year, that was the first time, you know, ev everyone in her class called her Vim Bai. They never knew her real name. And that story resonates with a lot of other students that I show that to, right? Like it's, this is powerful stuff. They could be talking about a very personal experience, but it can resonate and often does to a multitude of other people feeling the same thing. Um, and learning about each other just helps our social and emotional learning. This is a new big buzz thing. And it helps develop empathy for each other, which I think is extremely important. Um, and there's no better way to convey information than through the audio and visual. 
It's a totally passive thing to, cons you, when you're watching a video, there's nothing active about it on your part. You, you just have to sit there and absorb, right? So it's a really powerful way of getting information across and there's no faster way to develop empathy, I feel, than by watching another digital story. Okay, so this is a quote from the ministry. With quality teaching and support to help students on their way, they will become active, connected, and responsible citizens, right? This is not an option anymore to be pretending like it's 1980. A lot of teachers that I've met really would love this to be 1980 still, and they're just waiting to retire. They still do their paperwork, everything's in paper, and they just want to ignore digital technology entirely. And it's just not okay anymore. I, I appreciate it's a weird time. Um, it's a time of transition, as I like to say. We have to be patient with ourselves. We have to be patient with our students, with our parents, with ourselves as teachers. We can't be expected to incorporate all these new fancy tools and programs and apps. Um, there are some teachers that are doing that, but not everyone can do that. We're not getting enough training, frankly. Uh, and that starts at faculties of education, aren't sending out their, their new teachers with enough education. So we have to have patience with ourselves and, and start with one activity, right? Start with this one and see how it goes, right? Keep on building on it. We have to, because we're really putting our students at a disservice um, if we don't. Okay, so here are some I am right on time, this is amazing. So um, here are some resources that I'd like to share with you. Here are some examples of digital stories made. Um, the first resource is stories that were mostly made in workshops of mine. These are indigenous youth that live in the Northwest Territories. Some really powerful projects that, that you may find interesting. Also storycenter.org. Uh, they're the, the California based organization doing great work. They have a lot of different YouTube channels that you, you may, may find interesting. Copyright free images. I showed you how to use Google because I think it's the best because students are already using Google. Uh, but creativecommons.org is another site that you might find interesting. So much uh, copyright free content on there. Copyright free music, Ben Sound, iMovie Help. I have it there for you. Um, it's really not hard to, to use and it's super fun. And then I just developed a three part digital storytelling for community engagement lesson plan through media smart so i have that link there if you want to learn more it's also in french this brings us to the conclusion of the presentation um, but i'm hoping that uh, you reach out to ben and i if you have any questions if you want to learn more uh, I can work with you and your school directly. I can customize training for you and your school if you want. Um, I'd be happy to just jump on the phone with you and just answer any questions you have from this webinar as well. Um, and Ben, I want to thank you for all your support in, in hosting this awesome webinar. And I'm really, I'm really hoping that we get to do more. And I think now we should uh, move into the question and answer period. Sound good? Absolutely. So um, I guess I'll just say thank you to Jesse as well for uh, sharing all this. I learned a lot uh, and I will, I've known this is important, but this is like a great kind of first step for me to, to understand how it could be integrated into the curriculum in a more, um, like in a very doable way. So thanks for that. Yeah.